Okay guys, so this is your Unit 7 review video on exponential functions. As you can see from our cover page, we've got um, some examples of an exponential function. We've got our growth function as it's increasing from left to right. And that happens when our B value is greater than 1. And we have our decay function which falls from left to right. And that's when our decay value or our B value is between 0 and 1, so something like 1 half. Um, exponential functions all have an asymptote, which is based off of any shifting up and down, um, which in our basic exponential function, the asymptote is just the x-axis, which is y equals 0. The domain of every exponential function is all reals, and the range depends on that asymptote. So in each of these cases, our range would be from 0 to infinity, not including 0. Um, little joke over here, a guinea pig going in for a half off haircut, thinks it's actually half off the cost, but he gets half of his fur taken each time. And the joke is, it's, it's going to take forever. He's literally never going to have his entire coat um, shaved off because essentially what's happening is, this is his function, he's approaching this asymptote at y equals zero, and he's never actually going to hit zero because that's where the asymptote is. So just a little bit of math humor there. For this unit, you have some formulas you need to memorize. First is just knowing your basic exponential function. So that's of the form y equals a times b to the x. a is your initial value, granted there's no shifting or anything. b is your growth or decay factor. Now when we just talk about any straight increasing or decreasing, we write this as a is equal to p times 1 plus or minus r to the t, where r is that rate. Um, t is typically years, but we could change it to months or weeks, so you just got to pay attention. And p is your initial value. a is where you end up. Compound interest is a equals p times 1 plus r divided by n to the n times t. Now, when we introduce an n in compound problems, that's the number of compounding periods per year. So if it says monthly, quarterly, whatever, um, if it's monthly, n is 12, because that's 12 times per year. So you would plug in 12 for n. Um, if it's compounding continuously, and it would say this in the problem, your formula is a is equal to p times e to the r t where E is a constant, and you can find that in two locations on your calculator. It's the Ln button and the divide button if you hit second first. And also you have to know how to take radicals and rewrite them as fractional exponents. And so if you have the B root of x to the A, that's x to the A over B. And likewise going the other way, x to the M over N is equal to the nth root of x to the m. And the way I always remember this is in a fraction, it's always power over root. So if you think about a tree, the roots are always at the bottom of the tree, right? So the root is at the bottom of the fraction. So if you remember power over root, you can be able to go back and forth between these. So some problems I'll go through, um, I'll go through this first one here. I'll go through um, some just basic rewriting stuff. So uh, this section in here, converting to a yearly, converting to a monthly. I'll do a few of each type of solving. So I'll do something where the variable's in the base. I'll do something where you have to rewrite and get common bases. Go over our basic exponent rules. Writing a function based on a table. Practice writing just a decay function, um, doing a little bit of compounding problems. Just basic, um, graphing your basic function, asking some questions about it. 
Do a little bit of some decay and some mindful manipulation. Solving in your calculator. And then I actually added a problem, which is where I give you the variable, but now it's in terms of months. So you can add this to the back of your packet. So coming back to this first problem, I've just taken the time and already filled in this table of values. Um, just to show you how I did this, because you know it doesn't come out and tell you it's growing by a certain percent per year, I had to figure out the growth factor per every five years, which as you can see, it goes from 1990 to 1995, so it is increasing by five years um, each time. Um, what you would do in your calculator is you would take this number, the 86,332, and divide that by the previous number, so 82,000. And so that's where the 1.05 number comes from. Another way to think about it is 82,000 times some value, so maybe you call that R, um, actually I'd probably call it B for the growth factor, would give you the 86,000, so essentially you're solving for what B is. Okay, so you're taking the number that you, ad you ended up with and dividing by the previous. So I just did that, filled it in for us. So we're by hand figuring out what the average five-year growth factor is. So just like what you guys would do in middle school, when you're finding the average, you add up these numbers and divide by however many you have. So I've got um, 1.05, so let me grab my calculator here, 1.05 plus 1.11 plus 1.00 plus 1.08 plus 1.03. So I get this number and I divide by one, two, three, four, five numbers, because that's how many I have. So 1.054. And according to my directions, it doesn't want me to round. So when I find an exponential function that models this terms and um, models this data in terms of yearly growth factor, you have to recognize that this isn't yearly, this is every five years. So if I were to write a function, say f of t, where t is years, technically um, my initial here is 82,000, and then this 1.054 isn't happening over t years, it's happening over t divided by 5 years. Because you have to read this exponent as once every 5 years, this is what the growth is happening. Okay, But I want yearly. So that means I need this to be a 1t on the outside, so then it's in terms of once per year. So what I'll do is I'll bring the 1 over 5 in the, from that exponent inside. And now it's a 1t on the inside, or on the outside. So getting my calculator here. So I take 1.054, raise that to the 1 divided by 5. Notice uh, if you're not using math print, like my uh, my calculator on this computer doesn't have math print, um, notice I'm raising it to the 1 over 5 in parentheses. So I get 1.01, so rounding to the nearest hundredth. So I actually just rewrite this here, 1.01, so you know where it came from. So now it's in terms of yearly. So now using my calculator, let's find a function that actually does model this data. So we're going to use our regression capabilities. Now remember, this is years. Let's represent this as years since the beginning. Otherwise, your calculator um, would freak out because the function is growing way too quickly. So let's call this 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 because it's years since 1990. So this will be our x, and our y will be our house value. So we're editing our lists. Okay, so again, we're doing this in terms of five because it's increments of five years. 82,000, 86. Two. Make sure you're always very careful doing this because if you get one number wrong, that'll mess up your entire regression. 
Okay, so make sure everything matches up. Make sure all your numbers are accurate, and it looks like I did a pretty good job. So next, I hit Stat, Calculate. Now, you're not going to see it right away, but you're looking for the exponential regression, as this is an exponential function. So there he is, exponential regression. Now, um, because I'm using an older calculator on here, it doesn't give me the prompt screen where you would have um, L1 and L2 probably already inputted for you. If you have an old one like this is modeling, I'll do second L1, comma, second L2, because that's me telling the exponential regression, hey, that's where my data lies. Hit enter, and there we go. So my A value is 82813.29, because I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, and my B value is 1.01. .01. So I'll write this down. Now notice the calculator gives you automatically yearly because um, it's not going to do like a 2 over 5 in the exponent. It's just going to give you a straight T or X. So what is the percent difference in yearly growth? Well, if you look at our B values, they're actually identical. Um, each year, it's increasing by 1% per year. So, and I can tell it's increasing because this B value is greater than 1. So there is no difference. They're both increasing by 1% per year. Rewriting radicals. Um, so if you have a fractional exponent, it's power over root. So this is the fifth root of y technically to the first power, but we don't usually write the first power. So you could re you could just leave it like that. Um, 14 y squared to the 5 fourths, well that's the um, fourth root of the entire quantity, 14 y squared, raised to the fifth power. Now if you come over to something like d, only the w is being raised to the 2 sevenths. So this is technically 10 times the seventh root of w squared. Now, if you have a negative exponent, that's the same thing as the reciprocal. So we'll rewrite this as 4 over x to the positive 1 half, which if it's power over root, that's the square root of x to the first, or just the square root of x. Now, if they were leaving this as a final answer, we you know don't we usually leave radicals in the bottom, so we would rationalize and you'd end up with 4 radical x over x. Um, we don't have an example here, but let's say you have something like, uh, um, let's see, x over 125 to the negative 1 third, let's say. If it's a fraction being raised to a negative exponent, you would flip the fraction, because it's reciprocal, right? and now make it the positive one-third. So now this is the same thing as the cube root of this entire quantity, 125 over x. So just to give you an example like that. Now below here, number two, we want to find the yearly rate of growth in the decay, and this is assuming x is in terms of years. Now in this first one, see how it's a 1x on the outside? That is one year. So this is already in terms of a yearly growth or decay factor. In this case, I can tell it's decay because that B value is less than 1. So if you want to find the rate, if you think about this B value as terms of 1 plus R, and you solve for R, R equals negative 0.25. If anything, that negative should tell you you're decaying if you hadn't already figured it out from looking at the B value. So what this means is you're decaying by 25% per year. Now if you look at B though, it's an x divided by 3. So technically that's read as once every 3 years, not once per year. So you'd want to bring in the 1 over 3. Kind of looks like a not what I want, it's a 1.35 raised to the one-third, and then I'd evaluate that. So you plug 1.35 to the one-third in your calculator, you get about 1.105 to the x 
technically there's a seven still out here. That's just your initial value. So it looks like we're increasing because the B value is greater than one by 10.5%. Okay, da, 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 da. from the equation, this represents the growth of Matt's bank account in terms of T years. What is the monthly rate of growth? This is what we consider a mindful manipulation in that I'm going to force this function to be what I want it to be. When you have monthly or you want the monthly rate of growth, you don't want this to be one T as in one year. You want it to be a 12 T which you're going to read that as 12 times per year, a.k.a. monthly. So I'm going to force this to look the way I want it to look. So I want a 12T on the outside, but I can't just force something to be a 12T without balancing it. Otherwise, I would be changing the function overall. So in order to balance this, because I still have a 1T technically, I'm just changing the way it looks. I'm going to balance it with a 1 divided by 12. And that's because 1 divided by 12, or 1 12 times 12, is 1t, which then balances that. So using my calculator, I would take 1.25 and raise that to the 1 divided by 12. And I get 1.25. Um, one zero eight seven, etc. Okay, so um, let me write this three hundred one point zero one eight. We'll say to the twelve t. Now our function is in terms of a monthly um rate of growth. So if we solved this for r, if this whole thing was worth one plus r, you can already kind of see like just eliminating that one there, our rate of growth. Should I actually just, I'll solve it here. If you solve for r, r is 0 0.018. Move that decimal two places. This means we're increasing by 1.8% per month. And that's our monthly rate of increase, which makes sense. We're growing 25% of the course, course of a year. So if you're looking at one month, that's going to be a smaller amount of increase. Okay, just a couple solving problems. Um, technically, this isn't an exponential function. It's a power, but we're still solving exponents here. What we do is we isolate this exponent by moving over the 2. And then what I do is I raise both sides to the reciprocal power because you got to imagine you're creating an x to the first, technically. Those exponents, you know, power to a power, your rule is multiply. That's technically x to the first now. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, though. Now, when you raise this function or this value to the 5, 6, notice how the denominator is an even number. This means that you're going to have two solutions, positive and negative. So you technically have plus or minus. Um, in terms of a radical, it would be the sixth root of 23 to the fifth, which is, in your calculator, plus or minus 13.64. And I'll show you why there's two solutions. Grab my calculator here. Okay, let's say I plug in x to the five, um, six fifths. Oops, carrot here. Minus two and twenty one. I'm probably not going to see anything unless I make my window larger. That's like fifty, I guess we'll say. Okay, so this first one's my function. Oops, I need to extend my max, my x's here. Let's do like negative 20 to 20. All right, there you go. So you can see the two solutions. One's there, one's there. So that's why you need a plus or minus when you're solving this. Okay, next. So let's say I want to solve something where now the variable's in the exponent. 
you have to get a common exponential base and then you can solve the exponents. So like I'm looking at 1 over 36 and this is kind of tricky but this means I'm going to take the base of 6 to match this guy over here and raise that to the negative second power. Remember, negative exponents take re make reciprocals. So anytime you see a fraction in that base, think, okay, I need a negative exponent. I think 6 to what power gives me 36? And then I just make it negative. So that's 6 to the negative 2, and then the x in the exponent is equal to 6 to the 5x plus 14. Now that I have the base is the same, you drop the base, and you solve the exponent. So you say two, negative 2x equals 5x um, plus 14, negative 7x equals 14, so x equals negative 2, and we're good. Okay, now um, something like, actually let me do another one here, let's say like number 9, okay, you'd have to rewrite both of these bases, and if you look at 8 and 4, you should think, I know I can create, um, with a base of 2, 8. So 2 to the third gives me 8. Now that's still being raised to the 2x. 2 to the 2 squared gives me 4, still times 14 minus 5x. So now when you drop the base, you solve the exponents. Don't forget your exponent rules. A power to a power is multiplication. So you have 3 times 2x, which is 6x, is equal to 2 times 14 minus 5x. Don't forget to distribute. So 16x equals 28. So x equals 28 over 16. Or like 1.75. Okay, so if you're going to use exponent properties then to simplify something like this, remember this is power over root, so x to the 3 fourths times x to the 5 halves. Now, anytime you multiply numbers with the same base, you add the exponents. You have a calculator, use it. So if you aren't comfortable with adding fractions, you still got that option. So 3 fourths plus 5 halves. A math rack, 13 fourths. Now, if you're dividing radicals, convert them to fractions. So 7 sixth, 5 twelfths. Okay, if you're dividing numbers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So 7 sixth minus 5 twelfths, do a math rack, 3 fourths. Or, you know, if you're doing um, straight, this would technically be the same thing as uh, 14 minus 5, so um, 9 twelfths. Or you could write this as 3 fourths as well. Okay, um, given a table, explain why the pattern represents an exponential model, and then find the equation to represent the table. Well, if you look at your y values, each time we're multiplying, oops, multiplying by one third. 27 divided by 3 is 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and so on. So that's an exponential model because you're multiplying um, by a, in this case, a decay factor each time. Now every exponential function is of the form a times b to the x. So b is that number you're multiplying by each time. Now a is your initial value, which is your y-intercept. So when x equals 0, y equals 27. So your a value is 27. Okay, an adult takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. Each hour, the amount of ibuprofen in the person's system decreases by about 29%. How much is left after 6 hours? Okay, so we're going to write a function that represents how much ibuprofen is left in the body's system after six hours. So we're going to use the form A equals P times 1 minus R to the T. And in this case, we're going to let T represent hours, not years, because that's what our problem is in terms of. 
Um, we're doing one minus R because it's a decay. It's decreasing by 29%. So we're starting with 400 milligrams in the system. We're subtracting 0.29. That's our rate in terms of a decimal. And if T is hours, we want to find out how much is left after six hours. So you just plug that in your calculator. Okay, so 400 times 1 minus 0.29 raised to the sixth. And I get 51.24. or 51.24, excuse me. So that's how much is left after um, six hours. All right, um, in this next one, you have a bank account. Um, you're gonna have the money in there for three years and you're depositing $1,600. In the first scenario, you're doing some compounding. So compound monthly, so n equals 12, because it's 12 times per year. Your formula is a equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. P is your initial, so 1,600. Your rate is 2.5%, so 0 0.025 divided by 12 to the 12 T, which T is years, so times 3. So you just plug that in your calculator. Twelve times three is thirty-six. Okay, so I think I did something wrong. Yep, oops, forgot the five there, so let me just try this one more time. Oops, that's what I wanted. There we go. All right, there we go. So one seven two four point four eight. So that's how much money you would have in the account after three years. <laughs> I don't know why the other problem disappeared. There we go. Um, what about compounding continuously? This is our formula, A equals P E to the R T. So again, your initial is 1600. Your rate is 4%, so 0 0.04. And again, after three years, so in your calculator, you can do second ln, and that'll give you already e to whatever. So 1,600, um, that's 16,000, there we go. Second ln, e to the 0 0.04 times 3. And I get 1803.99. Um, technically, the ln um, is just one way to get e. If you want just a straight e, that's second divide, and then there's just e, and then you could manually raise it to whatever you want. So it's actually in two locations. Come back. It's so weird how that happens sometimes. Okay, um, what if I want to graph an exponential function? Again, we use our calculator and we pull up a table of values. Oopsies. Okay. Okay, so just to give us an idea here, there's our, technically our decay function, and I already knew it was decay without even graphing it because this B value was less than 1. So what we'll do is we'll pull up a table of values, and just to get some good points, let's go from negative 3 to 3 should be good. I'm just looking at my Y values, like those are easy to graph, and these are two. Now keep in mind, you're approaching an asymptote at Y equals negative 1, um, so actually, I'll take a second here and graph that just so that we know not to cross it. So now notice on your scale, each box is worth 2. So y equals negative 1. Actually, it's a straight line. is like uh, right in here. About. Okay, so that's our asymptote at y equals negative 1. So make sure you don't cross that. 
Okay, so my table of values, I'll copy it down. Okay, and then I'll use this just to graph. Oops. Yes, until I be just a smidge high. That's about what it looks like. It's kind of hard on my tablet. I would probably move that asymptote like a smidge lower. But yeah, that's the idea because then you're approaching the asymptote of y equals negative 1. Now, the domain of every exponential function is all reals. And your range, if you look, the lowest point you're going to go is, you know, this function approaching negative 1. So from negative 1, which matches that, matches that asymptote, to infinity is your range. Okay, next, population of zombies in Erie County, which is obviously unrealistic, of course we did a little sci-fi I guess here, um, is growing at a rate of 40% per year, so this is a growth function. There are 10 zombies, so that's your initial amount. To the nearest tenth of a percent, what's the percent rate they're growing by each month? So this entire problem is a mindful manipulation, okay? They're giving you the rate per year. Per year. So let's first write just a function that represents the per year increase. So this is A equals P um, 1 plus R to the T. This is just straight increasing over a year. Um, again, initially we have 10 zombies apparently, increasing at a rate of 40% per year. Now, if it wants per month, if T is per year, we want 12 T, because then that is 12 times per year. So, I'll rewrite this as a 12 T on the outside, but I can't just rewrite things without balancing it because otherwise I'm changing the function, which means on the inside here, I have to raise the 1.40 to the 1 over 12. So grabbing my calculator, do 1.40 raised to the 1 divided by 12, and I get 1.028. Okay, so we'll write that down. And that whole decimal will technically raised to the 12t. Now to the nearest tenth of a percent, um, swing that decimal to places, it looks like we're at a 2.8% increase and that's each month. So yikes, um, we're growing at 2.8% each month of zombies. Um, what about each week? Well, each week is 52 times per year, so same idea. I'll take the annual that I know and I'll manipulate it. I need a 52T on the outside and I'll balance it with a 1 over 52 on the inside. So 1.4 raised to the 1 divided by 52. So 1.0064, so whatever, to the 552t, so to the nearest tenth, swing the decimal two places, 0.6% um, increase, and again, now this is each week. 
Now, lastly, if I want the percent they are growing each decade, this is a little bit different. It's not going to be 10t because that would refer to 10 times per year. I want once every 10 years. So technically, I want um, 1 divided by 10 to the t. That's once every 10 years. So if you want a 1 over 10t on the outside, you want a 10 on the inside, because then that'll balance it to be a 1t. Grabbing my calculator, 1.4 raised to the 10. <laughs> so big number, 2, 8, um, 0.92, etc. So the 1 divided by 10t, okay, so swing the decimal two places, it looks like we're at about, um, there's tenth of a percent, okay, so 2892.5 percent each decade, <laughs> so a crazy amount, obviously, because it's growing over um, a large amount of time. Okay, the last couple of problems here, um, one is just talking about the graphing calculator, where if I do this, um, you're just finding where two functions intersect. The first is the two-thirds, which I know this is going to be decay because this b value is less than 1, to the x plus 2. Make sure you're using parentheses for that exponent, minus 2, and then where y equals 6. So if I graph this, there's my decay function. Look at that asymptote it's approaching at um, y equals negative 2. And there's your intersection. So you hit second trace. Option five is intersect. Now the first, whoops, whoa, where'd it go? <laughs> All right, the first question is always, are you on the first curve? Which if I move it, it looks like the first curve, I'm on the exponential. So that's one of the functions. So hit enter, yes. And the second one, if I shift it, you can see I'm on the line y equals six. Hit enter. Now guess is just, you get close to the intersection point you want to find. Um, it's really more important if there's two intersections, in which case you'd have to get close to one first and then close to the other. So enter again, and there's our intersection. So your coordinate point would be this value. So I'm going to save the time on the video. I'm not graphing it because we already did that. But just so you know, that's how you would find that in the calculator. Now the last problem I added here, um, I did deliberately just because, come on, move on. A little bit of technical difficulties there. Um, I added it because I gave you a variable in terms now of months as opposed to years. So a little bit of thought process there. Um, you've got rabbits and um, they're in Island Park. We're talking about the population of them. So R of T is the number of rabbits and T is in months since January 1st, 2000. What is the monthly percent rate of growth? Now a misconception is, oh, well, if T is in terms of months, I would just look at this but that exponent is 12 divided by t, which you have to read as once every 12, not years, but months, because remember t is in terms of months. So if that's the case, once every 12 months, that's technically, aka, one year. So that's your annual growth. So you're actually growing at 25% per year, if you think about it. So it's kind of a sneaky way of telling you, hey, that's actually the annual increase. If I want per month, what I can do is take that 1 over 12 and move it inside. Now I have 1t on the outside, which is representative of 1 month, since again, that's what t represents. So if I pull up my calculator, oops, wrong calculator, not this one. And I do 1.25 raised to the 1 divided by 12. I get um, point um, 1. Blah, I totally did this wrong, didn't I? I forgot my carrot. Yep, 1.25 raised to the 
1 divided by 12. There we go. I get that number. So let's rewrite this. Okay, so this is your b value. So if 1 plus r equals that, r equals 1876. So to the nearest tenth, it looks like we're increasing at 1.9% per month. Okay, so just be really, really careful about what the variable is. As we've mentioned in class, on the Regents exam, there's been two questions of this similar form where they give you an exponential function, but t is not in terms of years anymore. It's now in terms of months. So it just takes really careful reading. Good luck studying.